When I have listened to them, to my responders, what is it that they have taught me? For the most effective strategies for resilience are discovered within. There is a mystic correspondence between the seen and the unseen. Responders, like other warriors, carry things that support their mission on what is called a duty belt. Resources that are carefully chosen so that the tool is easily deployed when it is needed. Most of them have multiple functions, both for the care of others and for the care of the responder. I would suggest here five duty belt tools proven by responders. And they are tools that we might adapt for all who serve. The research for this was often in the heat of battle. It is not abstract theoretical concept. The first tool, unit cohesion. This is that tribal bond of warriors and other responders that earn trust in those with whom one serves that can be reached for in time of need and is dependable and works together with the work that we are doing. From this was birthed the growing use of peer support, the teams that are now on many agencies to promote self and unit care, drawn from within the responders themselves. Required reading here, Tribe by Sebastian Junger. The second tool, first aid. The responder warrior carries an individual first aid kit an IFAC. It is basic life-giving, life-saving skill sets and simple items like a tourniquet that in a crisis can save lives and might even be deployed by the responder, him or herself, to save themselves. A corollary skill set, no less practical than the IFAC, is psychological first aid. PFA. It is a proven tool to de-escalate traumatic stress in those who have been affected by it. Learn it. The third tool, comms. In crisis management, we say that communication must be interoperable. Whether by cell, sat phone, or two-way radio, vital messages must be transmitted and acknowledged in plain, concise language. Our professional jargon can obscure the care that we are trying to extend. Speak plainly if you speak. Let silent empathy fill in the details. The fourth tool, light. As much as the flashlight we carry on our belt we must have tools of insight and vigilance. In the dark hours immediately following 9-11, Deacon John Krzysztof Gies said that God has the vision of an owl. He sees us best in the dark. Even in our brief trauma interventions, we must pray to develop, to cultivate, and to deploy such intuitions. The fifth tool, identification. The ID, the badge we wear, identifies us to others. But it is also an effective reminder to us ourselves of who we are and why we are here in the first place. So too, the cross that is worn and touched from time to time and the signing of it refocuses us in the moment. An icon of the Theotokos in the pocket and the prayer open unto us the door of thy compassion connects us in a moment of stress 
to who we are, of what our need is, and who is there with us. So then, how is it that our care for others informs our own self-care? We pray to be effective in both. For if we learn helplessness in the moment of crisis, it will be all that we can give. If we learn and carry the tools and the skills that are here suggested, we shall be better prepared. Praying always, Lord, have mercy. We shall care effectively as he might for the suffering ones that he puts us alongside and for us ourselves. And taking a deep breath and crossing ourselves, we shall say in that most fearful, chaotic moment of service, Lord, it is good to be here.